guys and welcome to my second ever PC build video. Today we are doing a £250 PC for my brother. Um, basically, he had my really old PC which was like a HP small form factor desktop. Um, and yeah, it started to just fail a bit so I thought I'd use some of the old parts that I've got to build a PC for him. So a lot of you guys were saying on my last video that I was using not up to date parts but the point is, I'm not looking for getting a, 10, a GTX 1080 and like the latest Gen i5 or i7. I want to get a PC that's actually going to perform well for what I use it for without having to spend that extra amount of money just to get a later generation processor. I'm fine with what I've got so if you guys don't appreciate the fact that I'm only 15, I can't do all these videos where I spend like 3 grand on a PC, you just gotta appreciate that and if you want to see someone get the latest parts go to some other YouTubers because I'm sure they're going to be doing that. So yeah, without ranting a bit too much, um, today we're going to be building the £250 PC as I've just said. Uh, this is the case that we've got here, this is the Easy Cool K2. It's a case with a 750 watt power supply for only £40, so that's pretty good. I have been using this for a while actually and it's really decent. The power supply I thought would break in like two days, but actually it's lasted a long time. So yeah, let's just get these side panels off and then we can start doing the build. So as I said with the last one, um, quite ironically, keep your side panels somewhere where they're not going to get damaged. And yes, as with the last one, I dropped it again. And for this, you want to take off both of the side panels and store them somewhere so you can always put them back on. And you don't want to scratch them either because they will look quite nice once they're done. So guys, another thing that I've changed with this one is that there is an overhead camera right now. So right up there, hello. Hello, overhead camera. Yeah, it's just going to give you guys a lot better idea of what I'm actually doing. So as you can see inside the case here, we have the 750 watt power supply by a company called Ace. Never heard of them. Um, but it's not actually that bad and it has performed quite well in the time that I've had it And the reason why I went with the 750 watt one is because it has the 6 pin PCI um, for a graphics card So you can actually power your graphics card So yeah, let's just start by tidying up some of these cables and getting them out of the way so we can start working on the inside of the case So the first thing I'm going to install is this 90mm fan which is going to go right at the back here I've done the same thing as before with those um, rubber mounting things, they were already in here um, I don't know whether I put them in or whether they were actually here when we first got the case, but let's just go and install it now. Okay, so once we have that installed, we can just go and leave the cable at the bottom because that's going to plug into the motherboard on the fan connection. And speaking of the motherboard, that's what we're going to move on to next. Now you can see I have a H81M-H motherboard here. This is actually brand new, so I'm just going to open this up and you'll find two SATA cables as well as your I.O. shield. That's what we're going to do first is the I.O. shield. So um, we're going to go install that now and then I'm going to remove the motherboard from the box. And guys, you can use the box as a safe anti-static workstation. You shouldn't use the outside of the bag because the outside of the bag is where the static actually builds up. So just get rid of the bag and you can use the top of the box as your little workstation. So what I'm actually going to do is clear a lot of this stuff up and then put the case on its side so we can install everything that way. So yeah, once we have the case on its side like this, we can then go and open up the IO shield. So once you have the IO shield, you can see here that there are more connectors towards the bottom of the IO shield than there are towards the top. So you can see that this is going to be the bottom of the motherboard because it's going to line up with what you've got here. So we can go and get it, put it that way so that you can see how it's going to work where all the labels are heading towards the outside of the case. Hopefully then we can just snap it into place like this. There you go, so once you've got that done, that is one thing out of the way. Now make sure as well when you get your case that you grab the bag of hardware, in this case it's just a crap load of screws, so keep that to the side because you'll be needing that to install the motherboard in a few minutes. So now we're going to move on to the processor. Now, the processor I'm using for this build is the Intel Pentium G3258. It's the 20th anniversary edition Pentium and it actually has a lot of performance for the price that you paid for it. So what I'm going to go do is open up this little casing, uh, try not to drop it, then, then I'm going to open up the latch where the CPU goes. You'll notice that there's a corner which has a little triangle taken off of it. You want to line up the golden corner on the processor with that and then simply drop it into the socket and close the lid until that black little cover pops off like that and then you can get rid of that as well. Now of course usually when you get a processor new it comes with thermal paste applied to the cooler but of course as I'm reusing this processor I don't have it so I'm using some of this Noctua NTH1 thermal paste 
which I'm going to use to keep this thing cool. So you want to just put a little pea-sized amount in the center. I know I sound like I'm telling you how to do toothpaste. And then I can just close that up and I can use that on another build. Then I'm going to get the cooler. Um, and I'm just going to put it on there like that. Make sure all of these pins are facing the right way. And then I'm just going to press down on all four so that then the thermal paste underneath is now spread about and it's good for cooling. Then you can just plug in the CPU fan and you are done with the CPU. My brother will be having these two 4GB sticks of crucial memory. Um, they're nothing special really, they don't have any nice coolers and they don't really look very nice. But as it's not a windowed case, this doesn't really make a difference. So align the little notch that's in the RAM with the notch on the motherboard, you can see just there. Then simply line it up and press it down until the two little latches lock closed. And do that with your second stick as well. So that's basically done, now we can move on to installing the motherboard into the case. Okay, so what I'm going to do for this is I'm just going to move everything else out the way, get rid of all this packaging now that I don't need anymore. And as well get the SATA cables ready and on the side so we can use them later on. So installing the motherboard is a pretty easy thing to do, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver. You just get this little bag of screws and find the ones which look like they're going to install the motherboard. There's literally no guide to what goes where with this case, so it's just pull them out and then have a guess which ones you think are going to work. So you need six screws in total to install your motherboard, which isn't too bad. So once you've got your six screws like the ones I've got here, um, I'm just going to put them to the side so I know which ones they are. Then I'm going to take the motherboard, because the standoffs are already installed in the case, you can see there. I'm going to take the motherboard with the I.O. side facing where the I.O. shield is, then somehow this is going to work. And then I'm just going to get a single screw. bolting the motherboard from there. And now I'm not going to tighten them fully um, yet, just until they're all done so then it's an even amount of pressure put on the board. You don't want to put too much pressure on each one otherwise you could potentially break something on your board. Now I've seen a lot of videos where um, the people who are building the PC say that they're not going to install every single screw. You shouldn't do that, you should install every single screw because if you notice, around the little uh, mounting holes for the motherboard, there are solder joints and they're the groundings that go towards the case. So if you don't ground it then, you could potentially cause a short that would lead to a breakage inside your hardware. So just make sure that you install all the screws, otherwise you are running that risk. <laughs> So you can see now that this is actually starting to come on and look more like a PC than it did before. So this final screw right at the top of the motherboard is probably the most difficult to reach. And um, usually I'd recommend taking the power supply out when you install the motherboard because it gives you a lot more space to work with. But I didn't do that personally, um, just because it was already installed into the case. You may want to do that, it's just up to you at the end of the day. So I'm going to leave two more screws out because that's all we're going to need for this and I'm gonna go put the rest away in the stupid little bag. So now that we're done with installing the motherboard, we can now move on to installing the graphics card. Now the card of choice for this build was the R7260X from AMD with the XFX uh, third-party cooler. Now, I know this isn't, this definitely isn't the most powerful card you can get, and it's definitely probably one of the least powerful. It's basically the equivalent to a GTX 750 Ti. Now the choice behind this was basically, my brother doesn't use his PC for gaming or anything, but I still wanted to give him a card that will just give him a little bit of support um, if he's using like video editing softwares where it'll just help with the speed of the editing he's doing. And if he ever does want to play games, he does have the possibility if he has this card. So it's really easy to install a card. You just have to flick down the little tab that's there, make sure that the, um, the shields over here are removed and then you can just line it up. Once you've got it, you can just press it in and then that's done. And then I'm gonna take these two screws, which remember I left out earlier going to take them, drop them into place and just tighten it so that the graphics card is nice and secure. So once we've done that then we are good to do the wire management. Now you can see there's a load of, PA of power supply cables here which the first thing I'm going to do is put them through this hole back here so that it all stays nice and tidy that way. Then I'm going to take the 24 pin power I'm going to wire that through and straight into the motherboard. I'm also going to take the 4-pin CPU power and wire that back through the hole that we put it through and plug it into the CPU. Then all we have left to do is the graphics card power and then we're moving on to storage. So the graphics card power cable simply just comes through and you just plug it in 
And then the wire management for the motherboard is basically done. So we can now move on to storage. And on the storage side, we have a Western Digital one terabyte drive. These are really good hard drives and I use them myself in my PC, which is actually behind my camera right now. So I can move my desk off and do this build. Um, they're really reliable drives, I found. So it's just as easy as sliding it in and then getting these two screws which came from his old PC and just tightening those up so the hard drive is installed. They're pretty good at thumb tightness actually, I don't see the drive moving at any point because his PC is going to stay where it is. Then all we need to do is wire the SATA power connection through and plug that into the drive. And then finally we need to open up this packet of SATA cables which came with the motherboard. And then we can get the one that's flat, we don't need the one with the right angle thing, I'm going to use that in my build. We can just simply plug that into the drive. So yeah, we can just simply plug that into the drive and then plug that other end into the motherboard. And just make it a bit tidier, probably put it behind the graphics card cable if I was being completely honest. And then once we've done that, this PC is pretty much almost done, to do almost done and ready to go. I just realised I forgot to plug in this fan connection, so I'm just going to go do that now as well. And then all the wire management is done, I'm just going to make sure that everything's nice and tidy, so it looks good. And I'm going to get the side panel where the cables go on that little cable shroud. And then finally I'm going to get the other side panel, put it on there. And just slide it on. And that is the end of this build video, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, and especially if you haven't seen it already, go and watch my last build. I don't know when I'm going to be doing another one of these because simply I don't really have the money to go and buy brand new PC parts and things. With this one, I was using a lot of my old parts from my old PCs. Um, but yeah, so for the fourth time, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.